Hey guys, and welcome back to the Turd Ferg Show. All right, the video that we're actually going to take a look at today is actually from a long time ago, about five years ago. It's picked up like 14,000 views, and it was how to derive this equation. And uh, it had one small error in the video. It actually did not even affect uh, the what I derived in the lab at all. But I wanted to make it right with this one and how to actually have no mistakes in the video, which this is a hard one not to just because uh, there's so many little twos and Fs and Is. Uh, the number one thing, comment I had in my other video and a video where I actually solve for a problem like this. If you're wondering when do we solve this, it's when you have like an object, say M1 mass of 1 and maybe M2 mass of 2. Let's just do this. Um, and you're actually trying to solve it and maybe and sometimes they'll be nice and they'll make the masses the same and that's great because they cancel out uh, but a lot of times like they'll say this object's going positive two meters per second or centimeters per second this one's going negative three centimeters per second or meters per second and you notice i'm not concerned with units on this one and it's simply because the way these work, they're almost like a proportion. So the units really don't even matter. I never even change them on these, especially for the sake of like a physics competition. But anyway, so you've got like a velocity one initial. And then this one over here is like velocity two initial. And what it is, is we can't solve this problem without an additional equation being present. In other words, if you're just going back to your plain old traditional M1, V1 initial, plus M2, V2 initial, conservation of momentum, equals M1, V1 final, plus M2, V2 final, you're unable to solve this because you've got two unknowns. You don't know velocity one final or velocity two final, so you need an extra equation, and that's what this equation is. Now, the number one criticism I got in my other video is people saying that uh, my book has this formula in it. And I hate to say it at this point, but you do need to be able to do a certain degree of algebra to get very far in physics. And if you will quickly take a look, you will see the equation I'm providing is this equation that might be in your textbook. Uh, the reason why I always write it this way is I always taught students to memorize equations in physics, uh, particularly because we did contests in physics. And so this was just an easier equation to memorize. V1 initial plus V1 final equals V2 initial plus V2 final. That's a lot easier to memorize than the alternative over here. But I assure you, do the algebra and you will find these are the same equation. So let's get to it and let's actually derive this equation. And so to derive the equation, it really starts at the fundamental part that's saying this. If you sum all the kinetic energy before, all the kinetic energy initial in this collision, all the kinetic energy final as a wacky K, it's got to be equal to all the kinetic energy after the collision. That's what defines a perfect elastic collision, is the fact that all the kinetic energy before equals up to all the kinetic energy afterwards. So let's do something. Let's break that down. What are you saying? That means, and I'm going to now just, let's, let's break this down. I'm going to say that if you add up the kinetic energy, M1, V1, initial square plus one half m2 v2 initial square if you add up all that initial kinetic energy for a perfect elastic collision it's got to be equal to all the final m1 v1 final square plus one half m2 v2 final square and if you're wondering how I managed to make one small mistake in that other video five years ago is obviously saying M1 V2 final and all this stuff a thousand times. So let's go ahead and start deriving this. So when you write out the conservation of energy, you should quickly be able to tell, well, the one halves cancel out, obviously. So the one halves cancel out instantly. And what I'm going to do next is this. 
I'm going to get the V1s on one side and the V2s on the other. So now if you look, I'm going to have M1, V1 initial square. I'm going to go grab the M1, V1 final from the other side. So minus M1, V1 final square. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to have M2, V2 final square. M2, V2 final square. So I'm just getting the V1s and V2s on the same side. So now I've got this M2, V2 initial over here. So I need to subtract it from both sides. So minus M2, V2 initial square. And I've got that. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually factor out the M1s. So I'm going to have M1 times V1 initial square minus V1 final square equals M2 V2 final square minus, if I can get all this, V2 initial square. And so there, I've factored those out there. And now what I'm going to do is take a look at this difference of squares that's in here. So I, I, if you're looking at this, you should be able to be like, oh, wait a minute. I know what this is, V1 initial square minus V1 final square. That's the same thing as M1 times V1 initial plus V1 final times V1 initial minus V1 final. And that's where this is so hard to derive. And there's not a lot of teachers I know ask you to derive it. But that was the reason I did this several years ago. There was a student in the class up in Canada uh, actually asked me to do this because they said their teacher would not allow them to use this equation if they were not actually able to derive it. And I was like, man, that guy's after my own heart, hardcore. And so now let's do the same thing over here. Let's look at the difference of these squares. So we've got V2 final plus V2 initial times v2 final minus v2 initial and so now we've kind of we've actually broken this down as far as we can go so now i'm going to do something i'm going to go back to our conservation of momentum equation and i'm going to do the same thing to it i'm going to take it and i'm going to get the v1s on one side and the v2s on the other side so again this is nothing but your conservation of momentum. That is not some brand new equation or anything like that to be looked at. So now let's take that one and let's go, let's go, I'm going to go way down here on my page and I'm going to rewrite it because I want to have room that hopefully we can combine all this together at the end. So here we go. So let's do M1, V1, let's do a different color. Come on guys, it's, it's, it's 2020. I can do this. So now let's do this. M1, V1 initial plus M2, V2 initial. All I'm doing is rewriting that conservation of momentum equation because I want you to understand where I'm getting all this from. M1, V1 final plus M2, V2 final. So now let's do some. Get our V1s on the same side. So M1, V1 initial and minus m2 v2 final equals on the other side oh my goodness stop collaborate and listen ice is back from his brand new i want the v1s together so m1 v1 initial and now i need to grab this one m1 look at that i almost made a mistake moving this many years ahead told you this is a it's a hard one to derive just from the standpoint of not goofing up now on the other side i've got my two on the other side v2 final and let's bring this m2 v2 initial over here so minus m2 v2 initial and now same thing factor out m1 m1 times v1 initial minus v1 final is equal to m2 times v2 final minus v2 initial and now all i'm going to do is this i mean we're, we're we're knocking on the door here look at what we got except for the fact i left the one off of that see 
All I'm going to do now is look. Wait a minute. You should see this here. Back to our conservation of energy side. So now look at it. That means that M1, V1 initial minus V1 final can be substituted with this M2 from down here. So that means I can rewrite. So hopefully you get this substitution. M1 V1I minus V1F is M2 V2F. So I'm going to do a substitution here. That is all I'm doing at this point. So that means in this problem, I'm going to have now M2. I'm substituting. I'm taking this and bringing it up to our conservation of energy. M2 times V2F minus V2I times, and what did we already have in that thing? V1 initial plus V1 final, and then equals on the other side, we had M2 V2F plus V2 initial times V2 final minus V2 initial. I think you should get bonus work for doing this, honestly. And now look at what happens. Let's go to blue, 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 blue. M2, M2 cancels out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. V2F minus V2I. V2F minus V2I. Wait a minute, that cancels out. And the only thing I'm left with is velocity one initial plus velocity one final equals, and I'm going to rearrange it instead of V2F plus V2I, right? V2I plus V2F, and there. I have got my equation derived. And so, yeah, I know it's a lot of work, but all it is is, if you think about it, all it is is conservation of energy. Uh, we broke it down, isolated the V1s on one side, V2s on the other, took the difference of the squares, and then we went to our conservation momentum equation. We did the same thing, got our V1s on one side, isolate, we got M1, we derived it out, and then all we did was substitute back in the conservation of energy, and we've got our equation. Uh, if, if you're going to try and apply that, I've got another video where we actually use that. Uh, you can stop watching if you actually want to see it used here. I'll do it real quick using that example we had earlier from the very top. Let's see if I can just capture this example that I wrote. There we go. Let's get that. Copy that. Yes. No, oh, stop it. Oh, you're, 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 you're just, you're killing me now. So let's see. Copy. Come on, guy. Copy. All right, there we go. Takes a little second here to get all the technology to work sometimes. And so now let's just see if we can't do this problem. And yeah, if it was the same masses, oh, it makes these problems so easy. But now to do this problem, you need your conservation of momentum equation. Uh, boy, I'm about to mess up again, but it's getting lunchtime. My brain's getting down. Plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. And I'll need my special new equation as well. And let's do it in a different color because it is special. Let's, let's go back to green. We just don't use green enough. V1 initial, the red-green colorblind person. Actually, you're okay right now. Plus V1F equals V2I plus V2F. Like I said, this is easier to memorize than that other version of the equation, and that's why I do it this way. So let's just go ahead and let's get straight to it. Let's just plug in numbers. Let's go straight to it, plug in numbers. So let's see, M1 I said is 1. So that would be 1 times positive 2. So that's 2. And then we've got V2 initial is negative 3, so that's going to be M2 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and that's equal to 1 times V1F, so V1F, and then plus M2 plus 
to V2F. And if you want more details on solving this, again, I've got another video where that's all I do. So this is negative 4 equals V1F. And this is why we needed that other equation, because, you know, look at this. You can't solve it. You've still got two unknowns. But now I know that V1 initial was positive 2 plus V1F equals V2 initial is negative 3 plus V2F. And now I can sit here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to solve this for V1F. V1F would be equal to V2F, bring that 2 over, subtract from both sides, minus 5. And now I can substitute back into this equation. Negative 4 equals V1F, so that would be V2F minus 5 plus 2V2F. Uh, let's see, get rid of this 5, so add it to both sides. Well, wow, it's pretty neat, so that's 1 equals V2F plus 2V2F. And hopefully you got a little idea what's about to happen here. So that would be what? 3V2F equals 1. So that means that we've got an answer of V2F is one-third. One-third meters per second, centimeters per second, whatever unit you chose to use. And, of course, now you could take this V2F, plug it in back over here, and you would have your V1F at this point. And it would end up, well, wow, that'd be pretty easy, negative four and two-thirds would be our V1F, so it'd be a negative number. So anyway, hopefully you got pretty good bearing on this, and I did not goof anything up. Hey, thank you for all the people who do watch these videos and stuff like this. Hope it helps. Sorry it's 17 minutes. Bye. Bye.